Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Prophet Leslie Johnson in the studio with me, and today we're going to be talking about Chrislam, which is Christianity and Islam in the same building where they're putting their Bibles next to the Quran. And what's wrong with that? So, Prophet Leslie, welcome to the Prophecy Club. Hey, it's really good to be here again. I'm excited, but I guess I'm not excited about this series that the Lord has me do because Unfortunately, it's so prevalent here in America that I had no idea how prevalent it really was. Okay, first of all, guys, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, why in the world should I get this series? So I'm going to tell you. First of all, she's making a series we're calling Error in the Church. And there's actually 12 topics and 10 DVDs. It's valued at $300. And if you place a pre-order for it, we're making it available for a gift of $180. The topics are Mysticism, New Age, in the Christian Church, the Kundalini Spirit Warning, New Reformation, Church, or Kingdom Now Theology, Chris Lom, Seeker Friendly, Seeker Sensitive, Emergent Church, Postmodernism, G12 Vision Church, the Tazi Worship Church, Tangible Kingdom Movement, False Christ, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church, and others. Now, You may be saying, well, why in the world are you asking $180 for these 10 DVDs because normally they're much cheaper? Well, normally we ask a donation of $30 each, so 10 DVDs would be valued at $300. But we started talking about what we wanted to offer it for, and this is what Leslie said. (laughs) Well, to be completely honest with everybody, you and Sean, our office manager, were talking about maybe offering the 10 DVDs for $75, and I said, well, then never mind. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to make them. I have put a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of teaching is coming forth through these DVD series that I'm doing. And fr- quite frankly, it's just worth it. It's worth the 300 It's It's not worth, I mean, $75 was just a complete insult. And so I shared my view with you both, and... And so we compromised, I guess you could say, and, and I think 180 pre-order is fine. I'll be making these DVD sets, the series, every Sunday at our church between 9.30 and 10.30. And like you say, they might as well just stay for the church service, too, right. if, if they come. But You start speaking at 9.30, but pe- go ahead and stay until noon, guys. Yes. Okay, so I mean, 9.30 to noon, Spirit right. of Prophecy Church, Corner Park and K in Plano, each Sunday morning between now and the end of the year. Yes, right now it looks like it will go to the end of the year. So they have to the end of the year to go ahead and pre-order for the 180 set series if they go ahead and pre-order it. But they need to know it won't be sent to them, I guess, till all of them are done or however you work that out, I guess. Well, I had, actually, you don't know about this, but I was kind of taken to task by another minister that was telling me, he says, you guys are shooting yourself in the foot. He says, you're actually hurting your ministry by the way you lower the price on your DVD. So I was taking the task over it, and then about the time you mentioned that, and I thought, okay, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. (laughs) So I thought, all right, I guess we need to do something about that. And more important than that is it's just simply worth it. So I'm going to put in my two cents, and I want you to tell them why you think it's worth it. Well, I'm worthy of, I guess you'd say, my hire. In other words, I'm worthy of all the information that I'm bringing them to them and condensing. And I can't say that I'm an expert on Chrislam or seeker-friendly churches or any others, but I can say I have done my research and I know a lot about what I'm talking about. We've got to know what's going on in the churches today because there's so many denominations, and yet now there's a compromised denomination that's going out, but that's gathering all the other denominations together, and they're sharing Chrislam in the church where there's Islam and Christianity next to each other, worshiping together. I need to just say right off the bat, if you are one of those that believe that Allah and Jehovah God are one, are the same, well, that's a deception that you have come to understand. So I want you to understand my point of view. And when you research and study about this, Allah and Jehovah God are not the same Father God. They're not. Allah is the false God. Amen. And Jehovah God is our God. Amen. And so it doesn't make sense starting an abomination into a church by allowing the Quran and the Holy Bible to be sitting next to each other. I mean, we're opening doors, these churches that are allowing Islam to come into the church, they're opening an abomination. They are opening curses to come oh, to yeah. them. Well, guys, this is one of the big things that destroyed Israel. 
You know, it's one thing when we're arguing between uh, pre-mid, pre-wrath, or post-trib, the rapture. It's another thing if we're arguing, speaking in tongues or not speaking in tongues. But this is bringing other gods into the sanctuary. This is the thing. I mean, the number one commandment is have no other gods before you. So when you're talking about Christians opening their doors to Islam, this is the thing that angers God more than anything else. This is number one on his bad list. Uh, I know a lot of Christians say, well, oh, it's terrible. We allow abortion. It's not as bad as worshiping another God. Oh, you may be saying, oh, we allow gays. It's not as bad as worshiping another God. The number one thing that God hates is when his people go after other gods. I'm going to step on some toes. I'm going to just say, you need to come to this. You need to not only come to it, but you need to get these DVDs. Because if you think you know it all, that's pride. I mean, she spent hundreds of hours researching this. There's been times where she's researching at 3 o'clock in the morning. Finally, I go to bed. And she's still researching this stuff. So she has made herself an expert in each one of these things. And I see the hand of the Lord in it. So tell us, what's wrong with Chris Long? One of the things that I think we do need to be aware of, the Quran describes that jihad is a system of checks and balances, and it's a way that Allah sets up to check one people by means of another. So in other words, if you're not allowing them to worship or believe how they want, or if you're violating what they're doing, then they have the right, according to the Quran, to bring us or others back into line is what they would say which is why it's so dangerous i think because that's where we're headed we're not only heading to where christians are going to be fighting against christians and saying christians just saying that god is love and we just got to love our neighbors and bring them in and just fellowship with them and go to buddhist temples and go to the shrine and you know allow the quran to be in there we need to learn how to worship their god and they need to learn how to worship our god again that's just opening an abomination but it's also opening curses and not only that you know where and when jihad might start happening right here more in america right next to us and in our churches there's a lot of churches from just my research across the globe that have this interfaith mission going on and one of them that's huge is called the house of one and they're going to have an islam a rabbi and a christian minister all underneath the same roof so that they can learn to quote unquote worship with each other that's just really bringing confusion to the people and not only that they're not going to know which god to follow whether to follow the false god or to follow jehovah god and to follow jesus there's one that i particularly can remember about it's an episcopal church and they even put up a sign in their yard and it says on their sign on their church sign it said allah blesses you our dear muslims brothers and sisters to me when you're making a sign and you're allowing to say that you know allah blesses you and you're basically blessing all back by doing that you know that's just a total I only word i can, can think of because it's just it says it all as an abomination to our god it's horrible for what the christians are doing and also this particular reverend as they call him even praises allah and i've got a video clip of it you know if you come and yeah that's part of what the, you're gonna be showing you'll be yes. showing a whole lot more if they come than versus just talking about it on the radio yes of course there's another presbyterian church that was in houston but they corresponded with the same type of presbyterian church in atlanta seattle and detroit and they all at the same time were doing a series of sermons that had been designed to produce a reconciliation between Christianity and Islam. They said, in addition to the sermons, the Sunday school lessons will center on the inspired teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. So right there, they're teaching them about Islam in a Christian church, one that says that they believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. To their people, they're setting them up for failure. They're setting them up to be confused. They're setting up their church members to not know the truth. In this, he's talking about reconciliation. And people have to understand, between fellow brothers and sisters of the like faith of, in other words, fellow Christian to Christian, it's good to have reconciliation. But between Christianity and a false god, it is not good to have reconciliation. We are not to have anything to do with them. We are not to fellowship with them. We're not to go out to eat with them. We're not to have anything. Matter of fact, in the Old Testament, it says you're not even supposed to mention the name of another god. 
And so God doesn't want us being friends with other gods. He doesn't want us worshiping them or having to do with them. Right. When it says to love thy neighbor, that does not mean you go and have break bread with them and eat with them and, you know, to hang out with them and party with them. That's not what love thy neighbor is. Love thy neighbor is love thy fellow Christian brother and sister. Well, not only that. it's not love the other God. Yes. But even if they want to say, well, love thy neighbor with the other religions out there, not only that to fellowship with other believers, but if we want to even go further and say to love thy neighbor with those that are of beliefs of other religions, that still to me, the greatest love of all would be to lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the greatest love, not just sharing belief with each other and praising the name Allah and praising God in the same sanctuary. That doesn't even make sense to me. This is straight from the pit. Yes, it is. It is. It really, really is. There's another one. Um, it's a fellowship church. Their whole premise right now is that they don't know very much about the Islamic faith. So they're trying to bring it in again. They're going to use the word reconciliation or they're trying to give the Muslims a place to worship until their mosque are being built. And so they're helping them get their mosque built and even giving them finances to help them and all that kind of thing. And so it's just building up another God here in our country, which, you know, we're supposed to be founded on a Christian nation. And yet we're allowing all these other gods. Not only do we allow them now into our country, but now we're allowing them into our Christian church. Now, if you think about that, that just doesn't make sense. And I don't even know why the Muslims would want to fellowship with us either, because we're not worshiping their God. And we talked last time on the program about their Jesus that's written in their Quran, Isa. That is not our Jesus. And I want to make that very, very clear. If some Muslim says, well, we worship Jesus too, I want you to know that that's a false Jesus. That's a lie Jesus. That's not our Jesus Christ according to the Holy Bible. And it can't be because it's contradictory. We'll be right back after this message. Prophet Leslie will be speaking each Sunday morning through the end of December, making a 10 DVD set called Error in the Church. This will help you to recognize a biblically-based church and avoid those with errors in doctrine, committing abomination, heresy, apostasy, and blasphemy. Many churches are like a poison M&M. They look good, taste good, but they'll kill you spiritually. Like Chronicles 20.20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. And the topics are Mysticism, New Age of the Christian Church, The Kundalini Spirit Warning by Andrew Strom of Australia, New Reformation Church or Kingdom Now Theology Church, Chris Lobb, Seeker Friendly, Seeker Sensitive Church, The Emergent Church, Postmodernism, The G12 Vision Church, Tazi Worship Church, Tangible Kingdom Movement Church, Viserian Siberian Jesus Church, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church, 12 topics, 10 DVDs valued at $300, And you can place your order for them now for just a gift of $180. She'll be speaking 9.30 to 10.30 each Sunday through the end of December at the Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano. That's on the corner of Park and K in Plano. No charge, of course. See you there. And now, back to the program. If some Muslim says, well, we worship Jesus too, I want you to know that that's a false Jesus. That's a lie Jesus. That's not our Jesus Christ according to the Holy Bible. And it can't be because it's contradictory to what our word says. So therefore, you've got to know that they are not worshiping the same Jesus, just like the Mormons. They're not worshiping Jesus Christ that we know as Christians, as our Lord and Savior. And so we cannot fellowship one with another like that. Brothers and sisters, it is also important that you have a prophet point this stuff out to you. And you might be saying, well, hey, I can see that worshiping Allah and God is bad, okay? But you need to understand how bad it is. It's really, really bad. It's the number one of the bad. But what Leslie has is the anointing of God to be able to point these things out, not just this, but many other things. That's the reason it's important to get the video set, if you can, also to come and to see her actually give this talk. Get this information. It is well worth the $180 we're asking for it. So many people say, well, do you know of a church that you could recommend us go to? When you have watched this, you will know 
the right church and the wrong church to go to. Right. And this is not just to not ever step foot in a church again. This is to find out when you do go to visit a church or if you are in a, a Christian church, are they doing some of these things that are that are not according to God's word and that maybe you need to get out and find a church that really is studying the word and getting the people to be trained and equipped to do the work of the Lord, you know, those, those kinds of things. And I'm going to be talking about what it looks like to have a, a biblical church and and I'm talking a lot about what's not a biblical church. And again, we got to walk out of them if we're in that. But I don't want people just to say, well, then, you know, it's just hypocrites and we're just never going to fellowship with another Christian or go to another church because that's against God's word, too. We just we need to do our study. We need to find out who is speaking the truth and who is not. There's one group out there and it's called Jesus and the Quran. And they're specifically giving uh, lessons on how to, to worship the Jesus that's in the Quran. And remember what I just said, that that's not the Jesus we worship, right. okay? And one of the things that they're doing is that they said that in the Quran, there's a single and central prayer that requests that God show us the straight way. So one of the things that they're going to do in this series that they're teaching on is bring the Christians together and the Muslims together, and they're going to recite what's in the Quran, and then they say that it's because it's, they believe that it's time that God shows us the straight way, just as what it says in the Quran. But again, that's not what the Holy Bible says. And they're trying to just say they're trying to promote peace. You know, they're really compromising the Word of God for what they say is God's love. This is not God's love. This is not sharing the gospel at all. It's hurtful to the sheep. It's very, very hurtful. One of the things that they're going to be doing at this fellowship church, and it's and I take it right from their website, it says that uh, we're going to focus on three major topics, the kingdom of God in the Bible, our identity with the kingdom, and Islam in the kingdom. Wow. Yeah. That's it, an abomination, it, guys. It is. It is. And then that, therefore, they can give understanding of Jesus and the kingdom, but also the kingdom according to the Quran. It really saddened me, Stan, actually, to when I started getting into this, and I did not have any idea where God was going to take this. I thought just teaching on the Kundalini spirit was the end of it. <laughs> it's growing. I mean, I hope I can even get it done in, all, in the 10 DVDs, but, you know, no matter what, I'll do my part, however, whatever it takes, however long God has me you know, studying on this. Let me also give a disclaimer. When you talk about the Fellowship Church, you're not necessarily saying the name of that church. No, I'm just fellowship. saying it's something Fellowship Church. Right, okay. Yes, or right. Presbyterian Church. Right. I'm okay. just giving you some examples that, some of these churches out there, part of their name, there's many fellowship churches, and I'm not, I'm not zeroing yeah. in on any of them right. right now. Right. I mean, you'd have to get the DVD or come and hear my talk to know which ones I'm talking about. I mean, this particular fellowship church that I'm talking about, they have a symbol, and it's kind of like a circle. They said that the circle represents the area of overlap between the Christian and the Muslim world. And then in the center of the logo is Isa, or the Arabic word, found in the Quran to refer to Jesus. They're trying to say that Jesus is there. Why can't these ministers, reverends and pastors, see the error of other ways? I'm shocked by how many that are opening their doors to this. This is the devil that has not only got his foot in the door, but at this point he's got his leg in the door and he's he's corrupting the church. Right. You know, I really truly believe that the one world religion is going to be the interfaith religion, bringing all of them together into one. Right. You know, sometimes people have thought, well, it's going to be the Catholic Church or it's going to be Islam or uh, it certainly wasn't going to be Christianity. I mean, <laughs> that's right. so, they don't want that to be the one world religion, but it's the interfaith religions that are bringing all the faith shared beliefs together. Right. And so that's where they're headed, and it's headed there very, very quickly. There's a, a church in Omaha, you know, the, the heart of our country, that is an interfaith church. They're bringing in the Jewish, the Muslim, and the Episcopalian beliefs together by coming together, they say, so they can share that one space and that they can build relationships and that they can also create an international model of religious pluralism and, and all those kinds of things. They, they think that they're doing something that's so great when they're really just have opened a door to the devil, to the Satan, to just to come in and, and have his way. There's also in Washington, D.C., there's a huge church there. There's a huge church in New York City. There's a, another big church in Atlanta, Georgia. 
a couple of them in Atlanta, Georgia. Some of them that, unfortunately, what they've done because of opening to these other religions, they've also opened up to other abominations that God speaks of that we're, as Christians, we're supposed to stop sinning. We're supposed to know what the sin is according to the Bible. And so when we find out what sin is, we're supposed to repent and turn the other way. And then unfortunately, and I'm going to talk about the seeker-friendly churches here, seeker-sensitive churches, not this Sunday, because we're going to continue on Chrislam on the 19th, but then the following Sunday, which I guess that would be the 26th, we're going to talk about the seeker-friendly, seeker-sensitive church, and we're going to find out a lot about why they say just God is just love, and it's a very, very compromised type of gospel, not to offend anybody, to make sure that they all feel comfortable when they come to their church. We even have some churches here in the Dallas area, Stan, that have opened up to the Chrislam service, and I'll, you know, reveal what some of those are. And this does not make me happy bringing this message at all. Why do you think they need to attend? In other words, what are they going to learn from you explaining this versus what they already know? Well, just from what our congregation members have said, and I find our church members to be very enlightened by a lot of things because of your teachings, and you teach some on Bible prophecy and things, and so, you know, our church really gets a lot of meat. We're not fed the milk of the word at all, and so I would consider our church to be very well informed on a lot of different issues, and I have had every single one of them every single one the every the last several sundays come up and say you know we did not know this you know i did not know it was to this degree or i did not have that understanding about yeah. it and i didn't know it was so prevalent and and i'm just getting started i mean well we, we've already done the kundalini spirit we've already talked about that and they were shocked and many had to repent from it i mean really some of them really had to just spend some time just getting cleansed and freed from that spirit themselves because they had became clean and said, you know, I, I fellowshiped with some of these others that had the Kundalini spirit on them and they wanted to be free from it. I can tell you that you're going to have a lot more information than what you think you may have right now. I will say that our congregation, I agree with you, our, ours is a mature congregation. They're well-informed. They don't have <laughs> their eyes closed. I mean, they have their eyes open, their ears on. And they really have liked uh, your teaching on this. And, and the applause is really good, and they just flock up to you and, and ask you more questions. I mean, guys, I, I don't know how to say it. You may be in a church that has a big problem, and you owe it to your soul, to your family, to your children, to get into this and make certain your church is the right kind of church. Then, especially when I get into talking about some of the other errors in the church that are going on, if they're in a church of compromise, if they're in a church that is watered down gospel that doesn't give the opportunity to receive Jesus because they don't, they're afraid they offend somebody, you know, if you're in that kind of church, I know it feeding your flesh. But like Stan said, you know, you owe it to your soul. You owe it to your spirit, soul, and body to do the right thing, to go to a church, find a church that is really speaking the truth and teaching the truth. And I'm not just trying to say come to the Spirit of Prophecy Church. I believe we're very close in, in doing the things that are according to the Bible. We stay teachable, and if we find that there's something that God is not pleased with, we're quick to change. And I know there's other churches that do that, but I am saying that it is your responsibility to make sure that you're not only training yourself and equipping yourself with the Word of God and the truth and not being just watered down, not just feeding your flesh, but it's also your responsibility, especially you husbands, to make sure your wives and your children are getting the message that they are supposed to be getting. There's a church in New York, Stan, and I talk about this, and, and I, you know, and a lot of this I take right from their website. I take it from their blogs or something like that. And they have allowed, you know, what they call the Chrislam mission to be in their church. And they said, you know, from the Quran, we now have received answers to these biblical answers that we did not know. In other words, they said this is, you know, now we have the fulfillment of what the Bible is really saying is because of the Quran. That's an abomination. Well, guys, you got to come and listen to Prophet Leslie talk. And that's every Sunday between now and the end of the year. And it's at Spirit of Prophecy Church on the corner of Park and K, that's right behind the Whataburger in Plano, corner of Park and K, just think about the margin, Park K, Park and K, 
And it's right behind the Whataburger, Sunday morning, beginning at 9.30, from 9.30 to noon. She's talking on Chris Slom this particular week. The 12 topics she's covering in this series, Error in the Church, are Mysticism, New Age, and the Christian Church, the Kundalini Spirit Warning, New Reformation Church or Kingdom Now Theology, Chris Lom, Seeker Friendly, Seeker Sensitive, Emergent Church Postmodernism, G12 Vision, Tazi Worship, Tangible Kingdom Movement, False Christ, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church, and a lot more. And I urge you, I strongly urge you to call in or go to prophecyclub.com and get Error in the Church. That's 12 topics, 10 DVDs, valued at $300, all for a gift to the ministry of just $180. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers, and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Prophet Leslie will be speaking each Sunday morning through the end of December, making a 10 DVD set called Error in the Church. This will help you to recognize a biblically-based church and avoid those with errors in doctrine, committing abomination, heresy, apostasy, and blasphemy. Many churches are like a poison M&M. They look good, taste good, but they'll kill you spiritually. Like Chronicles 20.20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. And the topics are Mysticism, New Age of the Christian Church, The Kundalini Spirit Warning by Andrew Strom of Australia, New Reformation Church or Kingdom Now Theology Church, Chris Lobb, Seeker Friendly, Seeker Sensitive Church, The Emergent Church, Postmodernism, The G12 Vision Church, Tazi Worship Church, Tangible Kingdom Movement Church, Viserian Siberian Jesus Church, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church, 12 topics, 10 DVDs valued at $300. And you can place your order for him now for just a gift of $180. She'll be speaking 9.30 to 10.30 each Sunday through the end of December at the Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano. That's on the corner of Park and K in Plano. No charge, of course. See you there. If your son or daughter were to bring home a book about Harry Potter, would you be able to talk to them and explain what is wrong with it? How about if they said, well, what's wrong with Halloween? Or what's wrong with Christmas? Or what's wrong with Easter? Can you explain? Explain just off the top of your head what's wrong with it, or would you find yourself simply out of words? Well, this DVD set is going to give you the answers to those questions. It's three DVDs and a book. The first one is What's Wrong with Halloween? Now, Dr. Jack Clooney is a ranking authority on Satanism and witchcraft, and he's an ordained minister, an expert witness in court proceedings, and he talks to you about street-level spiritual warfare from someone that really knows it. Then America's Occult Holidays, Dot Marquis was raised in a cultic Illuminati family. He attained the rank of third degree master witch. His family was in the Illuminati for seven generations, 189 years. He says Christmas is an ancient occultic ceremony dedicated to the birthday of Tammuz. Easter's shifting date is determined by astrology. Halloween is the deadliest holiday in human history. You'll learn the truth about practices like bobbin for apples, trick-or-treat, jack-o'-lantern, May Day, and a lot more. Then, in Occult Holidays Revealed, Stephen Dollins is an ex-Satanist high priest of the Church of Satan, and he reveals the origins behind Christmas, Easter, Halloween. Did you know, for example, that Christmas is not the birthday of Jesus, but rather the sun god Mithra? Easter is actually celebrating the birth of Ishtar. Halloween is a celebration of Samhain, the Celtic Lord of the Dead. Finally, under the spell of Harry Potter book, Stephen Dollins explains how the Satanists use Harry Potter as a recruiting tool. It teaches children spell casting, potions, cures, and that there is no difference between good or evil. It indirectly prepares children to receive the mark of the beast and makes Christianity appear to be weak and without power. Three DVDs and a book valued at $100, all for a gift today of just $30. And order it by October 24th, you'll get it before Halloween. It's the Halloween gift offer at prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. The Halloween gift offer, order by October 24th. Get it before Halloween at prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112.